Hello and welcome to the 16th video in this series making simple Flappy Robin for the iPhone and iPad using Cocos 2D version 3. So good news is back on the back off the laptop, well still using the laptop but with the two large monitors attached to it as well which makes things much easier. Bad news is I think this is my sixth attempt at what is an extremely simple video and I'm getting frustrated with it so if I'm a little bit impatient in this one, you already know why, and I apologize. What I want to do in this video is simply add a high score label below the score label um, in the application. And I also want to save the high score to disk. Now, saving to disk can be done in lots of ways, SQLite, uh, binary files, anything you like really, text files, and most information or JSON or XML, but most, in most occasions on the uh, on the Mac systems, um, be it the iPad, iPhone, or indeed a normal computer with Mac OS X, uh, inf uh, settings and, and things like that are usually stored in what's called property lists, and those are files that are dot .plist, so plist files essentially. And those property lists are structured uh, pretty much as XML. Um, when you look at the files yourselves, there's a tiny bit more information in there now and then, but essentially they're XML files, um, which mirror dictionaries inside Objective-C. Now, if you're not familiar with dictionaries, um, I suggest you take a quick look at some, some, type it into Google and have a quick look, but it's not very difficult. It's If you're coming from C++, then it's like a map, so you've got your key and your value. Um, and all you do is you store things inside your dictionary values, and you store each of those under a name. So, for example, where I've got something here, you see here that I've got under the key column here, there's bundle version. So the key is a string called bundle version. So if you wanted to access that value, you would ask in this um, this property list, this plist file here, you would ask for the key bundle version, get me a string, or you would say cast the result that's stored under that key name as a string, and that would return you the string 1.0. If you used instead the key status bar is initially hidden, you would need to cast that as a boolean, and that would then give you yes. And as well as having individual values like this, you can then store arrays. So here we've got the icon files, and they're always named as items something like this, and you don't retrieve them by the key name, you retrieve by a number indexed by zero, and then that gives you for whatever object type you've specified then the value back, in this case a string. And also you can have other dictionaries within dictionaries which work in exactly the same way, key and the value. So it's all about having a key name and then the value stored inside there. Now what we would normally do then, or what you can do, is add your own plist files into your project and separate out all your settings nicely. Uh, for instance, for the Traffic Light Mania game um, I have on the iStore, I iPhone Store, I've got lots of, for each of the levels, the levels essentially are done that I use the same code, one code file for the levels, and then I read a lot of properties in, so the game actually builds the level up from there, rather than having to do separate classes for different levels and things. And that's done all through plists, property lists, and some JSON files as well, but essentially property lists. However, when you write these prop when you put these property lists in, you then need to write some code to ac to access the to get the file path to the application's bundle, and you have to do some other lines of code as well. And there's a much more convenient way of doing these settings, particularly when you're de dealing with small amounts of settings. And in the case of this series, we're only going to have three. That will be the high score, the effects volume, and the music volume. So for our high score, then we're going to make a key, just like the keys inside this dictionary here. And we're going to use something, our, our property list is going to be one which already exists, which is um, accessed by calling um, nsuserDefaults class, and there you can call a method called getStandardUserDefaults, and that gives you access to a standard user defaults property list, which contains lots of properties. You can um, print that to your screen yourselves, um, but it contains lots and lots of properties, things like, uh, I'm trying to remember offhand now, but the device type, serial numbers, things like that, languages, current OS language, all sorts of stuff like that, so OS number all stored inside this um, property list and you can add your own to that and synchronize. So that's where we'll store our high score. So I've been going on for four minutes now without actually doing any coding or anything, but I wanted to explain exactly kind of what we're doing there if you're not familiar with it. We'll manage this through our game manager. So in cgamemanager.h, I'm going to write a function called get high score. And this will actually return the high score, but won't be accessing the property list. We'll actually have a private member variable also in this class, which keeps 
um, the running high score whilst the application's open as well. We want to have a set high score and here we do take the integer, the score, and this will actually access the uh, default property list. And we'll also have now something called fill, uh, let's call it settings on startup. And this does it well, what it says on the tin, this will actually fill uh, our set or our local settings in the game manager, access them from the default property list bundle. So we're just going to go into cgamemanager.m then and drop in these functions and put the brackets in. And then before I forget, which has already happened, I need to go into app delegates and just copy this line here and let's put this function in here before I forget it. Good. Okay. So that's just basically making sure we call this when the when the first scene is then run. Okay, so back to the functions here. The first one's very easy, get high score. We want to return a high score, but we don't have one, so we need to add it as a private variable for our class. So just int and high score, like so, and we can return our high score. The next thing we need is our key. Remember I said that our key will be a string, which will then be used to find the right value in the property list. But rather than type that string out all the time, we'll defer, declare this at the top of the file here as a constant. So if we ever need to change it, we don't end up in a mess. So let's just call it um, k high score key, key name, and or hish score key names I've written there. And it can just be high score key like so it doesn't really matter it's just the name of the constant that matters to us so that's our, our key then there so that's what's in the left hand column under key in the property list you just saw and now we can write the accessing code so starting with fill settings on startup what we need is ns user defaults and a pointer let's say just a def for our defaults and we just say ns user defaults and it's standard user defaults. And that gets, that's all we need to do to get to access to this property list dictionary of the standard user defaults. So now what we want to do is we want to get our score using our key. And then our score is saved as a number, so that's an ns integer. And we'll call it score. And the way we do this is we say the defaults, and then we want to say object for key. We have our high score, high score key name, but the thing is, if you remember, we also need to tell it what type we're accessing. So we need to say that what we're accessing here is an integer value, so that it knows to return us an ns integer. Obviously, if you mess things up in here, then things are going to go dramatically wrong and your app will crash, so you need to make sure all these are correct, but we know we're accessing an integer value here. If that doesn't exist, it will return us a zero. So now we've accessed that, we can set our high score equal to score, like so. And I'm going to hit build and see if it allows me to do that or I need to cast, and no, I don't. Okay, so the high score is equal to score. So as soon as the app starts, the local private variable here in the game manager class is now synchronized with what was in the file. So now we go to set high score, and we need to say then if the incoming score is greater than the current high score, the first thing we'll do is we'll set the high score equal to the score. And now what we need to do is access our NS user defaults because we want to write this then to file. So we have our defaults and now we just say our defaults and set object. And here we need to again tell it what we're actually setting. And because it's not a string or it might be a dictionary, but here it's an NS number is what you say, and then you're saying, and we're taking a number with an integer, and that integer is our high score, and then the key is our high score key name. So it's, when you first see it, it can look a little bit confusing, but it's actually very, very straightforward. You just have to remember that when you're saving, you're setting your object, you need to tell it what kind of object you're saving, and when you're retrieving, you need to say what kind of object you're expecting to have retrieved. So now we've actually set into the defaults then, our high score, but there's one more thing that's very easy to forget that we need to do, and that is to actually synchronize, much the same as you do with uh, Java, with Android, with the settings, we need to call this synchronize there, so it actually writes the score to file. 
So that then completes all of that inside the game manager. And now we need to go into the intro scene and actually get this all up and running. And I'm really going to breeze through this quickly here because we are adding a label here, which you've already seen many times and not really much else. So first thing we'll do then is add in this high score label. And I'm going to drop down now into somewhere in the code here and regret enormously that I really didn't write a, a function to prevent this repetitive code, but let's just copy the stuff for the score label and call this then the high score label. Make sure you get all the copying and pasting right here in all the places where it is. And the other thing we need to change really is its position here. And what we'll do is we'll set it to the score label dot bounding box dot origin dot y which will leave us with a nice gap and I'll just put high in front of here for high score zero. Next thing I want to do then is write a function much like the update score label here and we're going to call it uh, update high score label and what we're going to do then is we're going to say that uh, first of all we need because we're going to be using the game manager a couple of times let's actually get call it M A N. Let's get a reference to our game manager. So C game manager, shared game manager is singleton like so, so we can use it. And that we'll say is we'll say that if the game score from the game that was just finished is greater than our manager get high score. So if we've beaten our high score, then we need to do some high score updating. So we need to call M A N and set high score then with the game score which synchronizes then that to file and also the high score value private member of our game manager um, like so and that's all we should really need to do in there the last thing we need to do then is actually set the string for the high score label so I'll just copy this from update score label here and put the high in there and what we'll do is to make sure that everything's okay is we'll get our game manager and put the get high score inside here like so so what we need then is to call this in the initialization first of all where we've added it so we'll say self and update high score label so that'll set the label on initialization of the scene to whatever the current high score is and now we need to do a little bit of adjustment inside the game over and re-enable. So first of all the re-enable after game over. Here's where we'd like the high score actually to be shown. So we'll say self and update high score label inside here like so. And the other thing I actually want to do, one of the things I notice when I'm playing the game that I don't particularly like is when it uh, re-enables after game over I'd like the score to go to zero there. So what we'll do is we'll actually cut the game score out of the start game and then inside re-enable after game over you have to be careful to put this game store go going back to zero here and not here otherwise we'll never get a high score and we can actually just say self and update score label also inside there so the score resets back to zero and that should be all being well all that we need to do to get things running so I'll just run the application and we've got high score and high score and I'm just going to have a look at what I've managed to mess up there having high score twice and you've probably seen it watching the video have I put update high score label twice or something update score label ah I've got uh, the score label and not the high score label here the perils of copying okay run again okay so we've got score and high score now let's play this I'm sorry about the error just now but like I said I seem to be making so many small errors on this video which is why I've had to do it so many times over and over again and I'm hoping this is the last one so let's score a point okay we've got a point let's crash and now we've got score back to zero and high score of one so let's just beat that high score hopefully one thing I've also noticed while I'm thinking about it is the formation of the tube seems to be very repetitive and I've realized that I'm not seeding the random number um, randomly so according to time every time I start the application so I'll change that in a couple of videos time okay good so we've beaten the high score let's crash it should now be three 
Good, so we've got high score three, score zero. Let's just stop and run the application and hope we have a high score of three, and indeed we do. Very good. Okay then, so a bit of blood, sweat and tears, but uh, that video, which is actually very simple, is now done, and we've made a good deal really of progress really with the application. The actual playing screen is looking pretty good now. We've got the high score, the score, um, some nice labels, a pause when the game ends. And the thing we have to do now though is make a setting screen so that we can go into that screen and then set our effects and particularly the music, music volume because the music is very annoying and needs to be turned off. So thanks very much for watching, thanks for your patience if that dragged on a bit and see you in the next video.